your discretion is advised. After Donald Sterling got deposed like a shame dictator, Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of Microsoft, where he started there in 1980 as the company's 30th employee, bought the team for an assload of money. He also really, really likes developers. Developers, 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 developers. Speaking of teams that just exist in the league, what about those Los Angeles Clippers, the NBA's version of a freeloading college kid that just hangs around and leeches money off its parents and doesn't even have the decency to clean up after themselves? Probably the most amazing thing about the Clippers is that for nearly 40 years they tanked over and over again. In fact, in 2009 they were named the worst organization in all of sports by ESPN. Until of course Donald Sterling went full senile and spouted out racist remarks and the league had to punish him by making him sell the team for a billion dollars. Boy, they really showed him. And then the Clips actually tried winning, but like everything about this team, they absolutely blew the conference semis and a shot at respect when the Ginger Brothers, CP3, and DeAndre Jordan collapsed against the Rockets in 20. Dear residents of LA, we had a chance to make the playoffs last year, but instead we do what we always do and tank by losing our last four games. Remember fans, we are always winning by losing. Sign the LA Clippers. And for the absolutely worst NBA franchise ever, the Los Angeles Clippers. Have you ever had a job where it didn't seem to matter that you showed up hours late, sat and did nothing but hit the random button on Wikipedia all day, and left right at 5 p.m. wondering how much of your soul got crushed in your meaningless occupation that you also somehow never got fired from? That's the only way I can describe the Clippers, who are easily the shittiest franchise in all of the NBA and possibly in all of sports, as this team seemingly only existed as a tax write-off for a billionaire slumlord and is now owned by an overexcitable and obnoxious Microsoft billionaire. Even when the league tried to make this team good by robbing their roommates and gifting them talent like CP3, they still somehow suck, and in nearly half a century of seasons, they have a pathetic 13 playoff appearances, 34 losing years, the second worst overall winning percentage ever at 40%, and zero conference championships, and of course, zero titles. When you added together their totals based on my scoring system, they ended up with a negative 17. And it's not even lovable losing this team is carrying out. This is a unit everyone wants to see fail. To continue to lose and lose hard. Because we need to feel great about ourselves. Every fan here can say, at least we aren't the goddamn Clippers. Unless you are a fan of them. So I do feel sorry for both of you. With a history of over 7 45-plus point blowouts, the Clippers served up some juicy fail with a 50-point loss to the Sonics. Danny Manning turned the ball over seven times, Norm Nixon had two points in 20 minutes, and the Clippers were, well, the Clippers. Dell Ellis and Xavier McDaniel had 27 points apiece as the Sonics shot 594 from the field and 545 from downtown. From downtown! Apparently, Toucan Sam had an illegitimate bird baby, and it grew up to be one of the most hated mascots in the NBA, Chuck the Condor. Immediately after he was unveiled in a ceremony that included a multi-billionaire dunking, the Twitter hate was swift and decisive. Poor Chuck, it's bad enough he works for the Clippers. The only facility in the NBA that features roommates, the Staples Center has different seating capacities listed for the Lakers and Clippers, but somehow the Clippers seat 63 more people than the Lakers do. That must be to accommodate all the extra sadness they dish out for their fans. Since this video isn't total clickbait, there actually is a secret tunnel in the building which connects the visiting locker room to the home teams which Chris Paul used to confront his ex-Clipper teammates in 2018. And you know that got memed hard though being a racist slumlord is not cheating intentionally tanking is i guess you could say losing to get better isn't bad if you never get better right the clippers ran the most successful sham in sports for over 30 years while living rent free in the lakers building they had no incentive to win and just cash checks it was their tanking in the 80s that caused the draft lottery to be born 
the Clippers responded by defiantly continuing to lose. It's assuring to know that you can put together the best roster in team history, grab the second seed in the West, and still manage not to be the best team in your own arena. Does Kawhi Leonard even have a pulse? I mean, the dude is emotionless even in the script club. All right, that joke was uncalled for. So I'll just bring up drafting Michael Ola Wakan. Congrats to the Clippers for being a 40-year-old that's finally moving out of his mom's basement. After years of living rent-free in the Lakers' home, the Intuit Dome will open in time for the 2024-2025 NBA season. It's said that the design is that of a basketball going through a giant hoop, but to me it looks like one of those weird, satisfying soap-cutting videos. The $2 billion arena has already been topped out and is looking to be on schedule and already way over budget. Features for the new stadium include on-site team offices, the team's practice facility, retail spaces, and outdoor basketball courts that will be open to the public. Hmm, public courts in Englewood. Sounds like a great idea. This place also wasn't without controversy as MSG Entertainment, who owns the Forum, where the Clippers used to play, tried to force them back there, but Steve Ballmer wanted to build so bad he just bought the Forum in addition to funding most of the arena himself. Okay, Steve, I see you putting your big boy pants on. This place does look amazing. I can't wait to see it when it's finally done, done. Chuck the Condor, LA Clippers. I have no fucking idea what a condor bird that looks like Toucan Sam's gay cousin has to do with the Clippers, but actually, the more I think about it, the stupidness of it all pretty much sums up the Clippers well. Rating, 4 out of 10. Los Angeles Clippers, Chris Paul. I almost went with the underrated 1975 MVP Bob McAdoo here, but in the end, I chose CP3 due to how he gave a terrible joke of a franchise real playoff expectations for the first time in decades. Sure, you can bring up how in his six seasons with the Clippers they never made a conference finals, but again, CP3 raised the standard to the point where not making the conference finals was seen as a disappointment. If not for some fluky shooting from Josh Smith and Corey Brewer, LA would have made it there in 2015. But nonetheless, Lob City was a fun brand of basketball to watch and CP3 was the orchestrator. His clip call commercials were kinda ass. Los Angeles Clippers, Michael Olawakandy. Olawakandy didn't start playing basketball until he was 18. He would go on to have one great year in college at a mid-major school, but everybody, especially the Clippers, who held the number one pick in the year he was draft eligible, were enamored by his potential. There's that word again. In typical Clippers fashion, Candy completely bombed and was a horrible player in his five years with LA. He never loved the game and was known to be lazy. But hey, he made almost 40 million in the league, so in the end, I guess he still won despite his incredible levels of incompetence. LA Clippers, blowing a 3-1 lead in the 2020 Western Conference semi finals after getting Kawhi and Paul George that offseason. The 2020 Western Conference semifinals, which took place in the bubble, was supposed to be a formality for the inevitable Lakers-Clippers Western Conference finals matchup, and it looked like we were right on track for that as the Clippers dominated to a 3-1 series lead. But not only did the Clippers blow a 3-1 lead in this series, they blew a 13-point lead late in the third quarter in Game 5, just one win away from going to their first ever conference finals at the time. They also were up big at halftime in Game 6 before combusting in the second half of that game and also had a seven point lead early in the second half of game seven before they completely crapped their pants. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard combined to shoot two for 18 in the second half of game seven and the Nuggets blew him out. Just another example of the Clippers clippering. Los Angeles Clippers, Robert Covington. This one's pretty easy. Covington played just 48 games with zero starts and averaged six points per game this year, but he was the sixth highest paid player on the team, making over $12 million a year. Come play off time he didn't see any meaningful minutes either so congrats to robert on getting paid a lot of money for front row seats to clippers meltdown los angeles clippers elton brand 2006 not a lot of choices to be made here for a franchise that's made one conference finals appearance so i had to go with elton brand in 2006 in my opinion brand is one of the most underrated players of all time and i almost went with Kawhi leonard but he's played three postseasons with the clippers and gotten hurt early in two of them while the other resulted in a blow own three win lead. So Brand got the nod in a postseason where he averaged 25 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, nearly three blocks on 55% shooting with great advanced stats and falling just one game short of the conference finals. His best game was in game one of the semifinals versus Phoenix. Even though Clippers lost, Brand put up 40 points on 18 of 22 shooting with nine rebounds, three assists, and four blocks. Los Angeles Clippers, Michael Olawakandi. There have been a lot of terrible players to suit up for the Clippers, but 
I don't think any player has done more damage on the court to hinder the chances of the Clippers winning than Ola Candy. If Ola Candy had been a late first round pick or a second round pick as opposed to the first overall pick, there is absolutely zero way in hell he would have gotten as much opportunity as he did. He started 310 games for the Clippers in his five year stint there, never showing any sort of signs that he could become a good NBA player. The only thing that he was relatively decent at was blocking shots, which was a byproduct of him being seven foot tall. Honestly, if you're over seven feet tall and you don't shoot at least 45% from the field for your career, you should be arrested. Los Angeles Clippers. The biggest paper tires in the NBA for the last decade. Lob City was one of the biggest failures ever, and so far the Kawhi Paul George era has been just as bad. LeBron's Lakers have gotten more hate over the last three years while winning a title than Kawhi's Clippers have gotten for not even making a finals. Kawhi has the knees of an 85-year-old man, and Paul George is the human version of the Atlanta Falcons. This team will always have talent and will always choke when it matters most. Steve Ballmer has the media in his pocket, but not me. Fuck the Clippers.